Hello. Hi. This is a bedtime story reading. Mm -hmm. We're going to be reading a bedtime story by Mark Chernoff. Yeah. This is titled, What Life is All About. Mm. Once upon a time, there was a girl who could do anything in the world she wanted. All she had to do was choose something and focus. So, one day she sat down in front of a blank canvas and began to paint. Every stroke was more perfect than the next, slowly and gracefully converging into a flawless masterpiece. And when she eventually finished painting, she stared proudly at her work and smiled. It was obvious to the clouds and the stars, who were always watching over her, that she had a gift. She was an artist, and she knew it too. She felt it in every fiber of her being. But a few moments after she finished painting, she got anxious and quickly stood up. Because she realized that while she had the ability to do anything in the world she wanted to do, she was simply spending her time moving paint around on a piece of canvas. She felt like there was so much more in the world to see and do, so many options. And if she ultimately decided to do something else with her life, then all the time she spent painting would be a waste. So, she glanced at her masterpiece one last time and walked out the door into the moonlight. And as she walked, she thought, and then she would walk some more. While she was walking, she didn't notice the clouds and the stars in the sky who were trying to signal her, because she was preoccupied with an important decision she had to make. She had to choose one thing to do out of all the possibilities in the world. Should she practice medicine, or design buildings, or teach children? She was utterly stumped. Twenty-five years later, the girl began to cry. Because she realized that she had been walking for so long, and that over the years she had become so enamored by everything that she could do, the endless array of possibilities, that she hadn't done anything meaningful at all. And she learned, at last, that life isn't about possibility anything is possible. Life is about making a decision, deciding to do something that moves you. So the girl, who was no longer a girl, purchased some canvas and paint from a local craft store, drove to a nearby park and began to paint. One stroke gradually and gracefully led into the next just as it had many moons ago. And as she smiled, she continued painting through the night and into the day. Because she finally made a decision. And there was still some time left to revel in the magic that life is all about. This next story will be actually an excerpt from this author's New York Times book, New York Times best-selling book, excuse me. It's called The Weight of the Glass. Twenty years ago, when Angel and I were just undergrads in college, our psychology professor taught us a lesson we've never forgotten. On the last day of class before graduation, she walked up on stage to teach one final lesson which she called the vital lesson on the power of perspective and mindset. As she raised a glass of water over her head, everyone expected her to mention the typical glass half empty or glass half full metaphor. Instead, with a smile on her face, our professor asked, how heavy is this glass of water I'm holding? Students shouted out answers ranging from a couple of ounces to a couple of pounds. 
After a few moments of fielding answers and nodding her head, she replied, From my perspective, the absolute weight of the glass is irrelevant. It all depends on how long I hold it. If I hold it for a minute or two, it's fairly light. If I hold it for an hour straight, its weight will make my arm ache. If I hold it for a day straight, my arm will likely cramp up and feel completely numb and paralyzed, forcing me to drop the glass to the floor. In each case, the absolute weight of the glass doesn't change, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it feels to me. As most of us students nodded our head in agreement, she continued, your worries, frustrations, disappointments, and st stressful thoughts are very much like this glass of water. Think about them for a little while and nothing drastic happens. Think about them a little longer and you begin to feel noticeable pain. Think about them all day long and you will feel completely numb and paralyzed, incapable of doing anything else until you drop them. This final story will be a Jataka tale. It's called The Moon Rabbit. <coughs> a monkey, an otter, a jackal, and a rabbit resolved to practice charity on the day of the full moon. They saw a very old beggar who was begging for food. Poor beggar, they thought. He looks hungry and has no food. Let us give him some. First, the monkey plucked some fruit from the trees. He brought the fruits and laid them in front of the old beggar. Next, the otter collected some fish and brought it to the old letter, uh, beggar. The jackal was too lazy to find something that the beggar could eat, so he caught the first animal he could, a lizard, and placed it in front of the old beggar, along with some water. The rabbit did not know what to get for the old beggar. He was not good at catching animals or fish, nor could he scale trees and get fruits. He only knew how to gather grass, but humans didn't eat grass. He sat in the corner unhappily. Suddenly, he remembered that humans liked to eat rabbit meat, so he got up happily, prepared a fire, and jumped into it. Oh, but what is this? The fire did not burn the rabbit. The old man revealed himself to be Sakra, ruler of the gods. You have proven yourself to be very kind and selfless, said, he said to the rabbit. Touched by the rabbit's selflessness and virtue, he drew the likeness of the rabbit on the moon. Henceforth, for all ages, all those who will look at the moon will see your shape in it and remember your kindness, he said. I think these stories are interesting because while each one on their own isn't um, the end-all be-all of morals, it'll tell you how to perfectly live your life in any which way. I feel like you can learn a lot by taking the important parts out of each story, yeah. Maybe we'll work our way backwards. For example, the the story of the rabbit, the moon rabbit. It speaks of selfishness and virtue, but ultimately, too much and you burn. Or at least, lean towards self-sacrifice. Which by itself can be a good thing, but... I feel like there's more to life than simply sacrificing yourself for others. For example, that rabbit may have... had a life, had a family, but they wouldn't have been able to... 
help their family anymore, help their neighbors, help others because they jumped at self-sacrifice at the first opportunity. They didn't consider their own self-worth as part of the equation. The moral of the glass, remember? Mm -hmm. The weight of the glass. It talks about your frustrations, your disappointments, as like a glass of water that you hold. And that if the longer you hold on to them, the more incapable you will be of doing anything else. Well, I feel like that's a really good uh, descriptor of what it feels like to need to let go of some things. And to try to embrace happiness wherever you find it. I think it seems to suggest that the earliest you can let go of those negative feelings, the better. Whereas, I don't know, I feel like there's something we can all learn from the, the bad things that happen, and maybe having a little bit of noticeable pain in terms like emotional struggle is sometimes what's required in order to learn things about ourselves. And then finally, or firstly, depending on how you want to count this, the first story, what life is all about. The very ending says, she finally made a decision. She finally decided it didn't really matter what you do, as long as you find something that makes you happy. They say life is about making a decision and deciding to do something that moves you. I like this moral the best, because it doesn't imply that there's a correct decision. And yet, somewhat tying into the story of the rabbit, I think there's an effort that could be made to assess what you can do for others. Not as your soul guiding principle, but considering how your actions might impact others. Or what you can best do to support those around you. And if that answer is art, then that's art, and that's a wonderful thing. If that's to maybe help people put down their glass full of all of the negative emotions they've been carrying, then that's a wonderful thing too. Mm. But these are just I guess alley rambling thoughts, but I wanted to share them with y'all. I hope you enjoyed these bedtime stories. Good night. <laughs>